Hello everyone and welcome back to me reviewing pay-per-views in this lovely series I have named WCWWECW. Today we're looking at one of the big ones, kinda, WrestleMania 3. Now WrestleMania 3 is known for two things. Hogan slamming Andre for the first time, except all the other times other people did, including Hogan himself. And the, I want to say, Savage Steamboat. Savage, Steamboat Savage. Randy Savage versus Ricky Steamboat. That is the card, the main matches, the title matches of the card. We've also got action, We've got tag team action. We got a hair versus hair match with Roddy Piper and Adrian Adonis. We've got a six man tag match. Heart Foundation. In action. We got Honky Tonk, Jake Roberts, Sheik and Koloff versus Brian Blair and Jimmy Brunzel. You know, we're back. I haven't done one of these in a while. WrestleMania 3. Let's get into it. Nice little logo here. Can't complain. Uh, just a 3D logo. Yeah. You can see the crowd and stuff though. So, yeah. So, dickhead on screen, evidently. Because, of course, he is. He's in time to WWE. In the same shit suit that I was either from WrestleMania 2 or the Wrestling Classic. Same shit suit. Looks wet. Introduce everyone to WrestleMania 3. Uh, now we've got Aretha Franklin saying, now I am a person who's to ever Aretha Franklin album. Uh, I can't lie. Besides respect, you, you don't need to. She has more than one song that I find okay. But in the hours and hours and hours I spent listening to her, I came to the realisation. I do respect her. But fucking hell, you don't need that many albums. No one bloody does. Anyway, let's hear her do a sing song of the USA, USA, USA. I mean, she has a great voice. Uh, it's fine. It's so weird to me, is because like they just because it's not even the national anthem. It's just a song. About my dickhead outside. It's just a song about America. I don't imagine if that happened at every like the end of effort. Those before the FA Cup final, you just had someone not even singing like "God Save the King." You'd be going like. England is great. It'd be mental. Anyway, let's see what's post the little sing song shanty. I assume the commentary team for this is the Gorilla Monsoon and the Body Ventura. They're okay. I like I like the style they have. I mean, they're no hot take, hot take incoming. I liked, I liked, I liked, I really like the current commentary team. The current commentary team is well not current but I, I like what it is now and I don't not a lot of people like Michael Cole but I guess era of when I was a fan and became a fan Cole's always been mine I remember Smackdown when I had like four that was rough JBL was always been a bit of a div but yeah this is the common team we're off to, off to ringside for probably the first match of the evening no entrances I Tag team match here. Got Rick Martel and Tom Zenk versus Bob Orton and Mavulous. Mavulous? Magnificent Morocco. Let's see how they scrap. I've seen a lot of Bob Orton and Morocco's work. It's been decent. I think. I couldn't I couldn't tell you. I've seen a lot of Bob Orton. He's bloody everywhere. Anyway, let's see how the match goes. Good little... Out here, the problem with doing these chronology, chron all the pay per views chronologically is most wrestling's just kind of eh, for the most part. I not no major spots here, but you know, a little two, two and a half star, five, five out of ten. Uh, Rick and Tom beat Bob and Magnificent, and uh, let's see what's next after <clears throat> after the little victory. Oh, we won. Bollocks of the first match. We had a as Gorilla put it, historical video. It was a it was a clip, a thirty second at most clip of someone being put in a full Nelson. I assume Billy Jack Hayes versus Hercules. So that's the next match, and he announced it as such, so it probably was that. But yeah, let's get into their little little matchy match. 
We now have a little interview between Mean Gene, Bobby Heenan, and Hercules. Hercules, I think his whole thing is um, he's the Hercules, but he's even references Atlas and general Greece and Roman shit. But yeah, he, his whole thing's a full Nelson. He's, it's the master lock, isn't it? It's the same story, they just repeated it back in time. But yeah, let's see if that match is any good. I'd forgotten this was the mania with the silly little cars. So yeah, here's Billy Jack Haynes in a stupid bright gold thing in a silly little car. No music, and he kind of just appears. I assume it'll be the same for Hercules and Bobby the Brain Tino. Yeah, they're in a stupid little ring thing as well. I think the match is just about to begin. Completely fine thing here. I mean, it would be better if there was an actual finish. A double, uh, the whole This whole match was built around the um, full Nelson. And... But it was it was just a fucking double count out. Four out of ten, you know, two two stars. I'm not looking forward to the next match because not everything shockingly has aged well. And 1987, oh dear. A little bit of post match shenanigans. Heenan kicks Billy Jack Hayes. And then he chases him around a bit, and then he gets distracted in the ring with him. And then Hercules twats him in the head with the chains, hence the blood. And then puts him in a full Nelson. That's like the afters. And I assume we're going to either get a little interview now, or an entrance, or just something before the next match. We could just, could just fucking kick off, you know, 80s wrestling. They don't have fucking logic. Well, I can see what, why Vince McMahon put this match on. It's, it's a six-man tag. You've got, as you can see here... King Kong Bundy with, oh god, Little Tokyo and Lord Little Brook. And they're going to be fighting Hillbilly Jim, another very tall wrestler. And then the Haiti Kid and Little Beaver, who are also um, a people of little stature, little people. I don't know what the correct words are. People who have dwarfism. Uh, I can tell you for a fact they're not going to be using the right words on commentary, are you? Bloody hell. Like, only in WWE and you know, only in fucking AEs could this just be... Oh, wait, no, they did it another time, didn't they? With uh, Lawler at Survivor Series. With Lawler and... I was meant to be Lawler, but he got done for, you know, liking young women, the dirty old bitch. Oh, God, wrestling's silly. And offensive, clearly. The commentary team say they've got Mr. Baseball commenting with them. I don't know anything about baseball or 80s baseball. Or probably 70s, knowing Vince. Uh, but here the lads come, Team Bundy in the little mini ring thing. And I assume we'll get the same thing with Team Hillbilly Jim. Team Jim? Yeah, Team Jim. They will interview Hill Billy Jim and his partners, just saying, "Ah, oh, oh, I think I'll be fine because I know King Kong Bundy's like be scared for his little buddies." No, oh, it's just it. Ah, oh, Vince, the evil shit. Why? It's just awkward to talk about because they've just gone. Ah, oh, you two, you're really big. You four, you're all really little. Let's have a fight at WrestleMania. <sighs> they come out of some country banjoy spiel and. The commentary are explaining that the big guys can only hit the big guys and the little guys can only hit the little guys. As if that wasn't blatantly fucking obvious. The King Kong Bundy weighs 450 pounds. He's, he is, imagine, imagine doing a fucking any move on one of the little dudes. That would be, that would be murder. Jesus. Anyway, match is beginning. <gasps> well, that was a waste of fucking time. Three, three and a half minutes, nearly. And... King Kong Bunny just tits an elbow drop on. Uh, I want to say... I want to say Little Beaver. Yeah, Little Beaver. I, two out of ten. Oh, no. Uh, yeah, two. One star. The, some of the wrestling's good. That the that happens. No. Well, what if I given one? Out, what if I given half a star so far? Let's see if it's worse than any of that. 
So is it worse, as bad as that flag match, which wasn't even a flag match? Uh, or, the, or was it worse than the boxing match? It was as bad as the boxing match, probably. I'll give it one... One out of ten. It's not even not even three and a half minutes, and it's just look. There are little people. Look, there are big people. Silly bollocks. I uh, hope there's not much more in this little bit. I hope they just. Oh, it's over now. We get some of the good matches coming up because we've got a Harley Race Junkyard Dog. Oh, I don't like Junkyard Dog, but I'm mainly only I'm mainly being as fine as I am because I know we've got a. Got six, another six man tag later of the Heart Foundation and then Davy Boy Smith, Dynamite Kid, and Tio Santana. Like, that'd be a good match. Anyway, let's see what's next. I saw this and I didn't want Holy shit. 1987. WWE are passing the Bechtel test. Lasts for all of six seconds because. Now, Randy comes in, as you can tell. I'm not sure if this was storyline at the time. Because I'm not watching surrounding wrestling. I'm not reading the rest of the wiki page. Or in and around the events I watch. But Randy just comes off as a massive bell end All the time. Because he's just a dick to Miss Elizabeth. And a big old chauvinistic bell end. I, I don't... Like, unless he's a heel and she's a face. But, like, I don't get it. Like, why is he just being a bell end? When do the... When does she? Re- when does the reunite happen? I don't know. But yeah, it's weird. When is like, oh, I'm the Intercontinental Champion? I'll answer all your questions. Oh yeah. And yeah, on to the next thing. We next get a little video package for the next match, which is Junkyard Dog versus. They keep calling him King Harley Race, so King Harley Race. In a loser must bow match, that will be acceptable, probably. Ah well, Harley Race is a good wrestler. Junkyard Dog's not my cup of tea though. So yeah. get a little interview after the package, and it's Harley Race, Moolah, obviously Mean Gene, and then the Weasel. Um, Heenan just manages everyone, doesn't he? Busy little lad. But yeah, if um, Harley Race wins, he gets re-coronated, Junk- and Junkyard Dog has to bow, and they're making it seem as if, if Junkyard Dog wins, he then becomes king. But yeah, but yeah Fabulous Moolah, nothing controversial there. Let's see if there's a Junkyard Dog interview, or they just have a script. Celebrity baseball lad, I think, I don't care. He's like, oh, I need to go be with Moolah. That's really just leaves commentary. Great. They will come down together for the start of the match in the little car, obviously. Assume Junkyard Dog will come down in the car as well. Junkyard Dog basically says, Oh, I'm going to be the new king. Harley Race has been there for too long. It's my go. Yeah. And I know I mention it every time, but it's so silly. They're in tiny little rings on the back of little cars. But yeah, here's JYD. Match is going to begin. Well, that was fucking dumb. That, yeah, like, that gets to 2 out of 10. Just nothing. The pit, the bot, the pit, the pin looked botched. Fucking just, the only main thing was there was some diving headbutt attempts and Harley Race did the silly, you know, the Shawn Michaels oversell from that SummerSlam with Hogan. I did that a couple of times, but yeah. That's fine. I mean, the post-match angle might be okay, but yeah, as a match, 2 out of 10. He bowed. Great. He hit him with a chair. He put on his purple gown cape thing and it's now going away, hopefully leading to the next match. Why is wrestling so bad? I just want to watch a, a match that goes maybe, doesn't even have to go more than five minutes. It has to be, you know, good. Come on. Next, we've got Piper Adrian Adonis heavy hair match. That won't go well with it. Jesus. This is just insanity. Vince says, oh, look, it's Hogan. He's got a match in about an hour or so, which is a lie. So another two hours before. Before then, and then Hogan goes a bit mental, rips his shirt off in about 
maybe 30 seconds. No, I think it takes him that long. He talks about 30 seconds shirt. So it's ah, oh, brother, I left the gym with all the non-believers, brother. Went to the mountains, bro. It's just meant to, isn't he? He's just, he's a lunatic. He is a lunatic. And he's fighting under the giant in the main event. Anyway, what? What cocaine with them on? God damn. Anyway. Tag match next. Woo. No entrance for the Rougeau brothers. Just kind of there. They're going to be scrapping Beefcake and Greg Valentine. I wonder who's winning. Maybe a 15 second interview here. I mean, she says, oh, why have we got an extra person in the corner? And he says, I, oh, you never know. And then I think they speak a bit of French. Great. Let's see all four of them crammed in a little mini ring together. Yeah, that's kind of funny. The Rougeau's lost this match. And all, all I can really say about it is maybe a minute in, Bobby Heenan comes in and he just chats about how he's got all these wins so far. So it was hard to pay attention to the match and what he was saying because he was talking nonsense. Um, but Greg Valentine and Beefcake won in a match that I did see. Three out of ten. Couldn't. Couldn't tell you any of the spots. Uh, there were, no, that's a fib. Um, it was a cool tag move by the Rougeos where one of them had the other guy electric chair and then hit him with like a... I don't really know how to explain it. Like, kind of like a meteor, but yeah. But then they cheated to win the um, Greg Valentine and the Bruce Beefcake. But yeah. Next up, now's, now's the heavy hair match. I have my order scuff -uffled. But finally, the next match is going to be a match that goes over five minutes. Only taken since, oh, it's, since, since when? Oh, I guess the Hercules Billy Jack Hayes match went over five minutes. That weren't any good though, so yeah. anyway, let's get into whatever's next. Oh, the, the heels out healed Beefcake and they've left him in the ring. They've abandoned him, so I face turn maybe. Oh, who, who cares? For for eighty standard, this is actually quite a good video package. It was like an actual blood, not blood feud, but a good feud going in. And I mean, there was hardly any homophobia, which is a low bar. But it's Adrian Adonis and it's eighties heel fucking Roddy Piper. But this actually looks like it might be quite a heated thing. Clips of, from Piper's pit. They've been at Piper. Piper then beats up, I think, a flower shop. I can't really tell. Then there's bits of them just fighting all around. Piper saying, oh, I'm never going to lose to somebody who wears a dress. Great. Thank you, the 80s. But yeah, it's actually seems to be quite a heated affair. Match will probably be a bit wank, but you never know. Could be good. Adrian comes down with Jimmy Hart to booze. It's the 80s. But to be fair, it could be the heel. Doubt it. Oh, but he's got shears. Because it's a heavy hair match. Loser will have their head shaved clean. But yeah, let's see what Roddy does on his way to the ring. I worked out why they're all cheering Roddy and booing thingy. Because they've just said this is his retirement. So that's probably why. Um, and he just runs to the ring. He doesn't get no Kai to probably the knee. He's fucking Roddy Piper. But yeah, let's see if the match and then the post match is you know, as good as the video package made it the this feud will be. Not too bad, this. Give it six out of ten. Three, three stars. Um, decent little match. They never specified if it was no DQ or not. Clearly wasn't. Um... <clears throat> Everyone's involved. Beefcake comes down to even the playing field. And then, yeah, Roddy Piper wins on his way out. I mean, we're going to see someone's hair get cut. And as I was pausing to give my little little titbit here, they're using, they're going to use the shears, goddammit. But yeah, let's uh, see what's going on. For a barber, Beefcake did a bit of a shite job here. Uh, head gets cut, do the mirror spot. Hey, look at the mirror. I thought they were going to hit him with the mirror. They didn't. He just punched it. And then they did a little chase round, and then he and uh, Adrian O'Donnell and Jimmy Hart just ran away. Yes, what's next? After Adonis is gone, uh, Gene announces that Roddy Piper wins in his farewell match. Yeah. 
Then a fucking fan jumps in and drives like, ah, oh, fuck up, shit, hand. And then security fucking demolish him. Because of course they do. But yeah. They're all going on. Oh, look how good Roddy Spy was. We'll never see him again. See him two years later, lads. He wrestled again in 89. Silly sausages. But I mean, two years is quite a long time. But yeah. Now we go up to the commentary and then, oh, where's. 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 Where's Venture? And oh, he's gone down to see the Fabulous Moolah. I'll be down there in a second. I'm like, hmm, great. Anyway, let's see what's next. Oh, no, he also, also he wants to be introduced to the capacity crowd in ring for some fucking reason. But yeah. Jesse then is like, oh, yeah, it's Jesse Venture or Woo by the crowd. But I'm just thinking, like, Bret Hart and Neidhart, Jim Neidhart, didn't get entrances, but we got. The commentator announced, like, come, he's the tag champ, you can see it. The next match should be quite good. We got Brett the Hitman Hart, Jim Nide Hart, and uh, Danny Davis, first two Santana, Dave Boy Smith, and the Dynamite Kid. This match should be quite good, unless Tios is mainly between fucking Danny Davis and Tio Santana. No offense to either of them, both good, but they're not fucking. Brett, Jim, Davey, or Dynamite. But yeah, that's well, let's, let's see what happens next. They'll get introduced um, to the ring, obviously, while well, they're in the ring. They say Danny Davis is his, his wrestling debut, and then they have a little, as you can tell, promo thing, and Jimmy Hunter says, oh, they're the best, man. No, they're going to win. The British Bulldogs want a bunch of crybabies. Ooh. And I assume they're going to walk down to the ring now. They're all in the little fucking ring. They're going down and they're explaining that Danny Davis is an old crooked ref. And these, they're all the, the Bulldogs and Tio are all annoyed at him and want a bit of, you know, vengeance. But also, the, uh, yeah, the uh, Bulldogs, as you can tell on screen, have Matilda, a Bulldog. But yeah, uh, this match should be magnifique. Good match as expected. Uh, Could have been better, but you know... Not every match is going to be a five-star classic. Uh, a bit clustery near the end, but I think that was the whole point. Because they had Uber Heel, um, Danny Davis there. Probably give it... Probably a, another six, you know? Probably as good as the last match. Six out of... Six out of ten, three stars. Um, yeah. Just, yeah, the hearts and the bulldogs... They're great. Yeah, let's see what happens in the post-match or pre-match the next match. Or they just start the next match. It's the 80s. There's not as much shit formula as there is now. Good little promo here. Uh, just saying, we're going to beat you, Hogan. You had a good time. I'm going to be the new manager of the WWF Headweight Champion. Something tells me that historically, something happens at WrestleMania 3 with someone getting slammed. I couldn't say who. <laughs> Entrance, no entrances here for Butch. Just straight up there, post interview. Uh, this is this is a little singles match between Butch Reed and Cooker Beware. It does it doesn't it doesn't go four minutes? Fucking why are there so many short bloody matches? Fucks, hey, Coco Beware comes down with his parrot. Great, I mean that's quite a cool image in it. But yeah, this match is going to be meh. I will not mention it, but they do keep cutting at this angle. I do really like this angle of their backs in the whole ring. Of it, you, yeah. Just, you know, Venture is showing off. You've got a t-shirt. Then he shows off his big muscly arm. But yeah, let's watch a sub four minute WrestleMania match. Fucking hell. Absolutely acceptable two minutes here. Um, I just need to have... Better finishes, so you can have a short match and have an okay finish. Um, gets yeah, two out of ten. So the finish is just oh, I did a crossbody with too much momentum, and the other guy pinned him. No, anyway, as much as I complain about some of the shit matches here, the next match is a certified classic. Got Ricky Steamboat, Randy Savage for the Intercontinental Championship. Let's see what. What happens between this match finishing and that match starting? And there's now a little bit of a beat down. Um, 
Reed and his manager attack Coco Beware, then Tio Santana comes out and they stand tall. Just like, I just want to get to the next match because I've been looking forward to it for a bit. <laughs> this this video by Andrew Smith. It hardly focus on their feud. George Animal steals in it more than fucking Steamboat. But regardless, the match is going to be great. I know it is. Wrestling Observer gave it fucking four and a half stars, I think. Is that right? Half of nine. Yes, four and a half stars. So it should be good, right? Right? R right? Little promo from Big Mr. Savage here. Being like, oh, history beckons this macho man. I'm going to put you out of wrestling. I don't think he does, you know. Uh, but yeah, let's, let's get into the entrances because it'll be good. It's Mania, baby. Woo! Good entrance because, of course, it is. It's fucking it's Savage. Pop and circumstance. Big old coat. Got the belt. Great. Off to interview. Ricky with meanest genus penis. Fine promo where he says, I'm going to beat you. I'm going to take the tile. I'm going to take the new horizons. Sick. I, I'm really excited for the match. But you guys are kind of like, oh, generic 80s. I'm going to win. You're going to lose. Bollock. I just want to see him fucking go. Dick blood here with George the animal. Great. Fail to care about George the animal. It's just I don't I don't get it. He's just a big hairy man who's a bit thick and eats pads. But this this match should should be very good. Fing, fingers crossed. That match was excellent. Nine out of ten, four and a half stars, whatever you want to call it. That was very good. Fast paced. Only thing I changed is maybe have less George. Steel involvement would have probably made it five, five out of five, ten, ten out of ten. But you know, still incredible nonetheless. But yeah, one with well, fast-paced match, lots of um, not roll-ups, what they call yeah, roll-ups, aren't they? Cheeky pins to an extent. But yeah, that was very good. So they're going to have a let down for the rest of the cards. We have Honky Tonk Man versus Jake Roberts and Iron Sheik and Kolo versus, I want to say they're the Killer Bees. Bright, B. Brian Blair and Jim Brunzel. And then you also got Hulk, Hulk Hogan and Andre the Giant at the main event. But yeah, that was an incredible match. Woo. This is just cool. Gonzalez Cooper. Uh... They just, it's like, oh, I'm fine, Honky Tonk Man, the pot, Snake Pit. And then they show a clip of the Snake Pit. The Honky Tonk Man hits with a car. Not a gimmick guitar. Not a Jeff Jarrett 1000. That's a real guitar. That would have fucking hurt. I've got a guitar here. Do you know the noise it makes if I just slap it against my hand slightly? That, that bit's a bit broke. Jesus. And then Alice Cooper says it's in his hometown, which is in, uh, 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 Michigan, oh, Pontiac, Michigan. He says it's the home of heavy metal. Nah, -uh -uh. that's beaming him, beaming him and Sabbath beaming him. Anyway, should be a fun little match. Might just have been edited out, but they don't come down to any music, which is weird seeing as it's Alice Cooper. But eh. yeah, Dan, I think we've got a little interview now with Honky Tonk and Mean Gene. Fake Elvis Presley comes out to insult uh, Alice Cooper. Quite funny. Does I make love and country music? You made nightmare music. Silly bollocks. But yeah, this match will be fine. I'm shocked if it goes more than five minutes. Does it? Ooh, let's have a look. Yeah, it does. Wow. Suddenly got a 4.15 on cage match though. Ho ho ho. He doesn't go out to the Honky Tonk Man song. Who does the Honky Tonk Man? It's a bit shit. But yeah. Jake attacks him right at the start, so I assume the match is going to just straight up again. Honky Tonk Man wins cheating in a, just a, a wrestling match that happened at WrestleMania 3. It gets four better than some of the ones that have come, but a proper fucking... Uh, not a slog, granted. It was only five minutes, no, seven minutes. But yeah, like a screwy finish, just there. But there's going to be some post-match because they didn't even fly Alice Cooper out there just to stand. Did they? I'd be quite silly if they did. 
This was kind of fucking good. We just smashed his fucking guitar up. Bloody hell. And then a bit of a beat down. Alex Cooper squares up to Jimmy Hart. Then uh, Jake comes in, puts him in a full Nelson. And then Alex Cooper friends him with a snake. Wrestling so silly. Then he runs away. Next match is probably going to be the tag match with the, the original Hot 2. I know by the time this video comes out, probably a dead meme and everyone's actually kind of annoyed that she's now fucking multi-millionaire, but Sheiky Baby's been doing it since the 80s. She can call off versus Killer Bees. I keep calling them the Killer Bees. They might not be. I don't care. But yeah, see if there's any in-between shit. I fucking hope there is. Because, Jesus, there's still... There's only two matches left and there's still... 40... Seven minutes of pay per view left, but yeah. Fink says there's an announcement that Minion's gonna say, I wonder what it is. I put all of the money I have on it being the attendance number. Great. I'd like my money, please. I need it. So if you're here, this part of the video, still watching, like, subscribe, comment. No one's actually here though. Great. You know who it is. I, I don't need to tell you who this is. It's the fucking boys. <sighs> These beautiful voice. I couldn't fault it, but it's about to get bloody ruined by some Yankee with a big stick. Mr. Ho himself is showing how much America is a land of the free and the land of freedom by stopping someone singing a song. Let's see who's coming down to the ring now. These are the killer bees. I've been right this whole time. Anyway, let's watch a bunch of, well, two old slow wrestlers fight the killer bees. Fucking the A's is meant. The wrestling is so funny because of time periods. Like this in like 93's borderline identical. But then Jesus Christ, 95, 96, 97 is different beast. God damn. I straight up sighed when this happened. I, oh, it's just so many shitty finishes. Every, basically every match. Last match had a bad finish. This match had a bad finish. Uh, match before this finish was okay. Match four was okay. But like, lads, so many of the matches have naff finishes. Second match had a bad finish. Fucking, oh, three out of ten. Because it wasn't too bad. Just another Nath finish. But anyway, let's see what happens in the post-match. <sighs> there wasn't even a beat down or anything. It just fucking happened. And now, ooh, it's on mic. This is so fucking stupid. Because he's like an eye for an eye, two for a tooth. Maybe they had a little scrap. But then he's like, oh, yes. There's a new spirit in town. It's called USA. And there's a USA chant. First of all, the Americans lost. Second of all, you as an American, as the flag bearer, literally got a flag on his stick. You cheated. You hit someone with a foreign object. Also, how could you be the winners here? You're unaccepting of people from other nationalities. I, uh, wrestling's not hard. This is, well, I guess this is just Americans being, you know, we're the best country because we got freedom. Unless you're not American. Then you got no freedom, dumb asses. Honest to God, this this is this is fine. Lover, a couple of interviews before the main event. Uh, Andre is just like, yeah, I I want to win. Yeah, once I have won, I'll be back here with the tattoo. And then, then he's like, yeah, yes. Once I win, I'm gonna be the best. Because he's he's got a list, wasn't he? But yeah, this isn't too bad. But the match still probably won't be good because it's still Hogan and Andre. Oh, no. No Osprey. No Osprey Oku. No Osprey Kenny. No Brian Danielson. No fucking. Yeah. <sighs> good little video package here to get you hyped up for Hogan Andre. Uh, show they were friends and then they weren't friends. Ooh. Just one move. That's all this match is, isn't it? Like, I'm toying around doing, oh, 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 it's one move. It's the first WrestleMania moment. It's it's one move. It's, 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 the, it's the fucking body slam. That's it. 
<sighs> Mr. Cocaine does a cocaine promo and he's like, oh, oh, brother, brother, oh, come on. I can't do a good Hogan, brother. Brother. Because it's just the same as my Vince. Anyway, he's like, oh, the, the power of Hulkamania. I'm not worried about the people on the inside. people on the outside. The, the earthquake when I slam Andre. It's, it's bollocks, isn't it? He's, he's a cokehead. He's just a cokehead that they let wrestle. Anyway, what's, is he just going to walk down to the ring? Um, Hopefully. But it's still just under 30 minutes if it's on pay-per-view. M- maybe. I don't know. Let's see. That pranny Mr. Baseball, he's... He's doing a fucking ring announcement. Who cares? This lady from earlier, she's the guest timekeeper. Great. All the celebrities at WrestleMania. So no music for Andre. Why, though? He's the... Ch- he's... Uh, just silly bollocks. Just silly bollocks. But yeah, no music for Andre the Giant. Hogan comes down to a real American, and yeah, it's, I mean, it, it's, it's, it's Hogan walking down the ring, it's <laughs> pointing and shit, Is Hulk Hogan, the match will be fine, <sighs> okay, so I know I've been shit on this for a lot of the show, but oh my god, ah, it's, it's alright, it, the, the call of the irresistible force and meets the immovable object is one of the best calls. Gorilla Monsoon is incredible on the thing. And I've heard Adventure as well. I mean, he's very much an over-the-top heel. But, you know, of course he is. It's, it's the 80s. Of course he's an over-the-top heel. Who else is he going to be? Anyway, but yeah, this is good, sh- good shit. So I've, I've never watched this match before. The first moment is a botch. He counts three. His hand hits the, hits the mat three times. That's incredibly funny. Well, it's it's the first it's the it's the WrestleMania moment, isn't it? The first one, Hogan slamming Andre. It's impressive, you know. The, the, this instantly led to the finish. This then, I like drop the matches over. So, I'm gonna be honest. Most of this match was a bear hug. Like the match was twelve minutes, easily three to four of them were just Hogan in their bear hug. It's getting five out of ten, two and a half stars. Important. Ah, oh, shit. But that's the last match. Hogan wins. Some more. Still another, what, 10 minutes? Uh, nine minutes left on the pay-per-view. You know, how it be. But, yeah, I mean, the, the, the match was fine. You know. Oh, God. But, yeah. So, what else happens? There's a really long celebration from Hogan after, in like easily four to five minutes. Him, he thanks God upstairs. He thanks all the. We didn't say this, but he's pointing upstairs. He's doing the ear cup to all the people around. And then it's just that for ages. And then we get the commentary team going, "What a show we've had!" Still kind of bickering about the steamboat match, but you know they get along. It's not a hate, hate, hate thing. It's a with friends with different agree with different opinions. And with that, it's the end of WrestleMania 3. Overall. Now, it's a very important show. I'm not saying it isn't. But so many of the matches had shit finishes. So many of them. Like maybe on the fucking 12 matches, easily half of them had were either just bad in general or had a shite finish. A, a, sn- a snoz finish. Highlights from the show, obviously, the classic match is Ricky Steamboat, Randy Savage. The good, the good tag match, the good tag match of the British Heart Foundation and Danny Davis, and then Tio Sandana and the British Bulldog. That's another good match. And also the the Piper Adrian Adonis match weren't half bad. The main event, obviously, Hogan slamming Andre's the thing from this match, from this pay-per-view, sorry, but, like, the match leading up to it is some pushes, some shoves, some bear hugs, and an old Hogan threatens to do a pile driver onto the concrete, which was never going to happen, was it? But, yeah, it was okay. Overall, I give it a 4.16 out of 10. Not the worst we've had, 
but nowhere near the best. And to be honest, only 45% of the show was actually wrestling, which is pretty rough. But I guess that's about average for wrestling at the time. It's about 50%, 45 is not miles off. Next time you come and watch me do a wrestling pay-per-view review, will be Starcade 1987 with matches with we've got Rick Steiner's there, Sting, Sting's first pay-per-view match. we got Steve Williams, Barry Windham, the Rock and Roll Express versus the Midnight Express. That'll be easy for me to remember. Um, we got Nikita Koloff, not, not this one, not, not um, Nikolai Volkov, Nikita Koloff, and got Terry Taylor. You know Terry Taylor, the Red Rooster. Then you got the Anderson and Blanchard versus the Road Warriors. You're like, That's the road, Lex Luger. And then the main event, Ric Flair versus Ron Garvin. Thank you for watching, and if you're still here, like, comment, subscribe. I will, I will respond to the comments. I have 37 subscribers. I will respond to your comment if you've gotten this far. Thank you for watching. I've been Keith Spoon. I'll see you next time.